All right, guys. First and foremost, just uh, going to go over Coach Mike's release. I had a chance to, to kind of visit with him over the last couple of days, and um, his wishes were just to, to give a little bit of information about the about the situ situation he's in. Um, this is what he, he kind of texted out to me or, or told me through, through Coach Steph earlier today. Obviously, this has gone on the past five or six months. It has gotten worse with infections. Throughout all of that, I've never missed a day of practice. Instead, even worked extra days, Saturdays, Sundays, um, to help this team and the pitchers prepare. Here lately, the health issues have increased, making it hard for me to swallow and even talk. This condition has limited me, <laughs> limited me to the bench, but I'm still here every day, hoping to fight, hoping to beat it. This past week, I, I did take a turn for the worse. Surgery revealed a very inflamed esophagus that required immediate attention from a specialist. So in the past week, I've spent four days in the hospital, making it impossible for me to travel and attend practice. I know how tough it is on these kids, but they're strong and they're tough. More importantly, they're leaders. I appreciate everyone's prayers, love, and support. But right now, please help these kids get through a tough situation. We need our Raging Cajun fans, the best softball fans in the country, to support these kids and help them get through this. To my players, I love you. Keep competing, playing free, stay together, and just know all those bombs you hit this weekend made me smile. Amen. So with that said, um, just kind of looking over the weekend, um, based on what I saw from, from my situation and, 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 and knowing kind of what was going on with some of those kids. From an emotional standpoint, these kids played with passion. Um, they, they played with, with, with heart and desire. And, and given the situation, it was difficult for them at times. Um, but they played free. They competed. They, they competed. If you look at that first game, you know, down by, down by three or four runs in the, in the third inning, we scored three to tie it back up. Down by four or five in the fifth, Score four or five to tie it back up. Going to the seventh inning, down by five or six runs, um, we get the winning run on or you know, the winning run at the plate um, in the heart of the lineup. And I look back at that situation and, and, and tell those kids and, and some of the other staff that, you know, given given the last four or five days, the scenario that these kids have been put in, um, given that situation, all you can ask for is at the end of the game that you can have three, four, and five at the plate with a chance to win it. Um, the way they bounced back in game two showed me how, 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 how their focus was, how intent they were to, 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 to win the series. Um, I was proud of that focus. I was proud of their ability to play free. The last five or seven days um, on those kids, and, and for all of us, just the unknown of, of what was going on with Coach Mike. He's such a... Um, and, emphatic leader, you know, emotional leader for, for all of us. Um, he, he's definitely the rock and, and, and the glue that keeps everything going. Um, and and to, to not know everything that was going on was tough on all of us. And uh, those kids, you know, they proved their maturity, they proved their leadership. Um, it, was, it, was very, it was very good for me to be able to see them bounce back in game two in such dramatic fashion and just, just tear the cover off the ball for, for four or five innings. Um, th those kids are, are important to all of us. Um, I'm asking you, um, from from Coach Mike and myself, just just please keep those kids um, in your thoughts and prayers. Um, it's it's a tough situation being um, being 18, 19, 20 years old um, in the situation that they're in to 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 keep it all together. Um, and it's been tough for some of us as well. Um, you know, we love Coach Mike, and, and Coach Mike means so much to all of us. So. Um, and, and his wishes are to, to focus on the kids. They're the ones that, uh, that he wants you to be in support of and, and thinking of. So um, at this time, I'll, I'll definitely open it up for, for questions and, and maybe even looking ahead to, uh, um, to the upcoming series um, with, uh, with Georgia State. How nervous were um, you, I wasn't nervous about the competition. I was, I was nervous and, and anxious about, um, about some of the procedures he was having. Um, like I said, you know, he's he means a lot to me, um, and it was it was tough not knowing, and and without him being able to talk and communicate, it it was tough not 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 having all the answers and and being that far away, trying to take care of that. You know, as far as competing and being on that field, it doesn't bother me. But 
but um, it was it was tough. Um, you know, he's he's a, a, a very dear friend of mine. A little bit <laughs> lets you uh, lets you relax a little bit. Um, makes you feel good. It, it makes you smile for those kids for sure. It makes you uh, it makes you appreciate their hard work and their focus and their ability to, you know, based on the situation, to be able to to step on that field and and compete like they know he wants them to compete. And uh, I was proud of them. It was a crazy situation, like you've been saying, and then you play maybe game one, one of the most probably the craziest games since you've been here. I mean, just and then how. How, what was that like? I mean, like, what, what's going on here? It's 14 and into yeah. the 14 to 13, you just don't play for it. That's right. You know, as far as, um, you know, I, I didn't look at it necessarily as, as the score or, or what was happening on the game. I was, I was focused on, on um, the performance that those kids were doing um, each at bat, um, each, each inning of work. And um, we, talked, we talked a little bit after the game. We made some, we made some, some mistakes in the circle. Um, we gave up a few more hits and a few more walks than what we should have, um, but the offense answered back in in every situation, every scenario, um, and that's what I took from it. And it was a crazy game, but um, those kids were nails um, the whole stretch. Like I definitely was probably uh, more worried about their performance and outcome than they were. Um, they knew what they were doing, and and they stepped in the box and and competed every pitch. Yeah, Alex this weekend um, was a huge contributor. Um, Alex, um, uh, in that situation, you just you just lose a game, fourteen to thirteen, um, and as a freshman, kind of get thrown into the mix. Um, I felt like she stepped up both both emotionally. Um, she gave that team something to uh, um, to kind of center themselves around, and and she was dominant on the mound. Um, the strikeouts that she was getting were, I mean, huge swing and misses. I mean, if you didn't get to see the game, she made she made those kids uh, swing and miss a lot, um, which gave me a lot of confidence for for knowing who we were going to go with um, the next day. Um, her performance was was what that team needed, and the offense just that game. The, the offense picked up. The better she did in the circle, um, the next inning they just hit the ball even harder, even further. Speaking of emotions, uh, how's it going to be, TJ? For Conference game Friday, and then that doubleheader on Saturday back home at Lambs. You know, I haven't thought that far ahead, honestly. Um, you know, my focus has been um, trying to trying to keep these kids um, um, in the protocol and the progress that that Coach Mike wants them to do. But I'm sure it'll hit. You know, come Friday evening um, um, when we start getting ready, um, and it. It's going to be tough for everybody. I think uh, I think the best way to uh, to help these kids get through it is is to have a uh, a stadium packed full of of uh, loud, boisterous fans and and show their support of those kids. Um, I think they feel at home um, with the fan support. You know, we had a great turnout with with fans in in San Marcos, and and I think that it helps those kids feel feel comfortable and be at home. But uh, I'm sure the emotions will be riding high about uh, three thirty, four o'clock on Friday when we start getting ready. Um, Lexi's numbers are just sick even for her this week. You know, is, is she doing anything right now that's a little different, or is it just? I think if you just if you look at her uh, last year as well, you know when we got into some belt play. Um, she just seemed to start seeing the ball a little bit better, and I, and I don't know if it's because now we start to repeat pitchers. You know, in some of those series, you'll see the same kid um, in, in two outings, um, but she is not. She is not missing anything. If she's swinging, like if you see the barrel release, it's a hard hit, and, and she's seeing it well. Her timing is there. Um, she's she's in a good place, and and she put on a a fireworks show for sure this weekend. What was the? I mean, obviously y'all kept hitting, but there was such a huge difference between their hitting in game one. The wind was blowing out. The wind, I'm sure, didn't just stop blowing out after game one. So what? The huge difference as far as y'all pitching. What did y'all do so much differently to go from fourteen to two to zero? I think, I think the biggest thing was just being able to uh, to see what their weaknesses were, be able to see what we could attack with Alex, and and Alex commanded the zone. She was ahead of hitters, um, which we didn't do in game one, um, which which does make it hard to to keep the ball in the park at a team. I mean, they had forty home runs before we got there, um, so it wasn't like they they hadn't hit anything. 
Um, it gave us the opportunity to pitch ahead in the count and, and get them to chase pitches off the plate late in the count, um, which, which minimized some of the damage um, from game one. I think uh, you know the one thing that I've tried to you know, talk to, to to Coach Steph and Coach Mike both today. Um, my plan is to be able to get um, a little bit of a, a, a some dialogue from him, whether it's via text or, or me writing it down from from listening to him talk. Um, but be able to pass on a few words to them um, is what he wants them to kind of focus on, or, or what they did well. Um, he got to see some of the some of the the game action from from this weekend. Um, that's going to be first and foremost for me to, to establish that connection between between the the, the players and Coach Mike. Um, I think it'll give them some relief. It'll give them a little bit of of, uh, of a relaxed feeling. Um, and then we'll just take each day like we do every day, the, the, the protocols in place and, and what we have to, to work on for each weekend. Um, it kind of stays the same, the, the offense and the pitching. Um, so from a from a preparation standpoint, I don't think anything changes. You know, the system that's in place works. Um, I just I want to try hard to, to establish a, a connection and a communication um, for those kids and him. I think that'll that'll make them feel better. Um, I think it'll it'll help ease their nerves a little bit, and then um, we'll just go out and attack them this weekend. Did he have any comments on the fourteen and thirteen game? N- not at the moment. Um, <laughs> He did. He did offer. He said some of those some of those home runs were bombs. Um, I said, yeah, some of them were a long ways over. Um, he was pretty excited about that. And you know, this game's tough. It, it, it's hard to go out and, and and expect these kids to win every single game they play or, or every performance they have to be you know elite level performance. Um, and, and it's it's tough, especially when you get to conference series on the road. Um, Texas State was a good competitive team. Um, they had a good pitcher. They had some quality hitters, um, and I think we lose sight of the fact that you know uh, this is a it's a tough game. That's why we play you know 50, 56 games a season, um, and and you can't judge or, or evaluate uh, um, a kid's performance on one outing. And and Jordan and Christina struggled a little bit, um, but the team bounced back and, and they found a way to 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 take the series and. Looking into this, going ahead in this weekend, that the offense is firing on all cylinders, and and I think uh, I think we'll be in a good place uh, by the end of the weekend. Georgia State played a similar type series. I mean, they score a lot of runs. So yeah, is this an even better hitting team than you just faced. You know, on paper, you know they've they've already hit 60 home runs. Um, I believe Texas State had hit 40 or 42 by the time we got there. Um, they're they're definitely capable, and, and I want to say. Between them and South Alabama, they hit almost the same number of home runs that that Texas State and and uh, and we did. Um, the the thing that I think helps us is um, we've got to see a lot more of them, um, you know, from last year going into this year, of what to expect from their hitters. Then Texas State had uh, had a few had a few newer hitters in the lineup that made it a little bit tougher for us to figure them out until after game one. Georgia State returns a lot of the same kids from last year, so it makes it a lot easier for us to to have a game plan in place. Um, Georgia State's a very, very good offensive team. Um, We'll definitely have our hands full, but I feel good about where we're at offensively and based on what we did this past weekend.